You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Haney. If you're new to the Three Things to Know podcast, thanks for being here. If you've been with us for a long time, thanks for coming back. And if you've been with us for a short time, thanks for coming back to you, too. I am very excited to, for the conversation that we're about to have this week. You guys know I am excited about the guests every single week. But this week we are talking with someone who promises to bring a lot of change to the city of Cleveland. Our guest this week is Cleveland Mayor-elect Justin Bibb. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to get to know him a little bit better so we can sort of get inside the head of the person who will be leading the city of Cleveland for the next four years. Before we do that, let's recap how we got here. Justin Bibb won the primary for Cleveland mayor decisively. Now, the way the election works for Cleveland mayor is it's a nonpartisan election. You don't have to declare a party to run for Cleveland mayor. What they do is they put everybody on the primary ballot and the top two vote getters then get to move on to the general election. Well, Justin Bibb was number one and current Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly was number two. So they moved on to the general election. And there, Justin Bibb decisively won over Kevin Kelly. He won by just under 15,000 votes. And that set the stage for him to become, very soon, what will be the city of Cleveland's second youngest mayor at 34 years old when he takes office at the beginning of 2022. And with that, we will be saying goodbye to Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, who has held the, t- the office of mayor of Cleveland for 16 years, an unprecedented four terms elected to be the mayor of the city of Cleveland. And Justin Bibb ran on a platform of change, never been elected to public office, never even tried to be elected to public office before this. And when we talk to him now, we want to get a little bit of a better understanding of, you know, his personality, his vision for the city, where his head is right now since election day happened a month ago and where it will be a month from now when he actually takes office officially as the mayor of Cleveland. So that's what we're doing here today. Very excited about it. Let's not waste any time. Let's bring him in for the conversation right now. All right, to get us in the know on what things are going to look like here in the city of Cleveland for at least the next four years, we have Cleveland Mayor-elect Justin Bibb with us today on the Three Things to Know podcast. Let's bring him in right now. Mayor-elect, thank you so much for being here on the Three Things to Know podcast. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. Happy to be here. Excited to have you. You know, it's a time uh, it's a time of change, as you've been talking about in your campaign leading up to becoming the new mayor of Cleveland, the first new mayor of Cleveland in 16 years. Change for you, too. You know, uh, have people in your life started calling you Mayor Bibb yet? Uh, yeah, I think for a lot of my friends, though, uh, it's hard for them not to call me Justin. So uh, we're, we're still trying to get them to uh, uh, change that a bit. But uh, it, it's certainly been a whirlwind over the last couple of weeks. Lots of change, lots of change for sure. Uh, In a recent interview, I want to ask you about something that your mom mentioned. I thought this was so interesting. Your mom, Charlene Nichols Bibb, she said that you first told her that you wanted to be the mayor of Cleveland when you were 16 years old. Now, I have to ask, that's obviously a long time coming. You know, uh, you are 34, the second youngest to be mayor of Cleveland now. A little bit of a way from 16, but how long ago was it when you first started thinking about becoming, running for the mayor of Cleveland before you actually announced back in January of 2021? Uh, it really was uh, uh, nearly 16, 17 years ago uh, during my junior year of, of high school. I um, I thought I was going to be the next LeBron James. Obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, and then I started working on campaigns, fell in love with politics. Uh, and uh, Angela Woodson, who is uh, one of the senior advisors on my transition team at the time was working on the John Kerry campaign for president. Uh, and she invited me to uh, Frank Jackson's inauguration party uh, in 2005. And I remember my eyes being lit up. I'm meeting with all the members of council and other local dignitaries. And I said, you know, one day uh, it could be my inauguration. And so 16 years later, look who we are. And, and here we are. Now, I have to say, you know, I have to ask you about this one, too. Here at the Three News family, we have a bib. We have our senior commentator, <laughs> Leon Bib. Yeah, yeah. You two are related, I understand. How yes. are you related? Uh, he's my second cousin. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Well, we do love Leon Bib around here. We can he's definitely tell you that. 
And and by the way, being a bib came in handy when I was locking on doors throughout the campaign trail. Everyone thought Leon was my dad, so <laughs> maybe help me get a couple points. Well, there you go. All right. Well, before we get into talking about what you have lined up, how you're working on your transition team here, I want to ask you just a couple of icebreakers so we can get to know our soon to be mayor of Cleveland. First up, assuming you even actually drink coffee, how do you take your coffee, Mayor Elect? Uh, I, I drink it black, straight black. All right. Simple. No frills. Yeah. No frills. <laughs> and uh, what did you eat for breakfast today? Uh, maple brown sugar oatmeal. Oh, okay. A classic. With a glass of OJ. With a glass of OJ. That's kind of my standard breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Are you a cat person or a dog no, person? I'm a, a, a dog. I don't have a dog yet. Maybe one day I'll get a dog when I have kids one day. Okay. All right. And uh, one more icebreaker for you. What is something on your life bucket list that you hope to do sometime soon? Mm. Uh, travel to South Africa. Oh, okay. Been on my list for a long time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of things on your bucket list, one that you can cross off here very soon is being the mayor of Cleveland. Like you said, <laughs> long time coming there. Now you have not held public office before. You've never ran for public office before. What has been the most surprising part to you so far since winning the election in November about preparing to be the mayor of Cleveland? Just the weight of the job. Um, when you're campaigning, you're so focused just on winning, getting votes, uh, getting your vision out to the voters across the city. And since uh, we won the election, I finally have had the time to really understand the weight of the job, uh, the weight of responsibility, uh, and um, the level of, I would say, um, emotional attachment it takes to be a great leader for the employees uh, that work inside City Hall and for the residents of Cleveland. Now, as you said, you know, learning about the weight of the position, the things that you have in front of you, you've had uh, some big names backing you in this situation. Some people who have been there before, including former Mayor Michael White. Now you'll be the second youngest mayor. Is there any advice that he has given you up to this point that you can share with us? Mm. Well, um, I've been lucky to get not only good advice from uh, Mayor uh, Michael White, uh, Mayor Jane Campbell, uh, but also mayors from across the country. I was just at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government uh, last week in Boston uh, talking to uh, the mayor of St. Louis, Tashar Jones. And the biggest advice I got from her is, you know, maintain your why, maintain your North Star, and make sure you are deliberate and decisive and run at your own pace in terms of how you're going to govern and lead the city. Uh, and I think that's been the biggest shift for me. Uh, coming out of a campaign where you're running around the clock, press and queries around the clock, and you feel like you're in this time pressure uh, uh, cook all the time. But when you're governing, you need to make sure you're decisive, deliberate, and prudent to make the right decision. And that's going to be my focus come January. Okay. And in leading up to that moment, we do now know you have your transition team in place. You have 10 committees on that team. I'm just going to run those down for the people listening and watching here in case they're not aware of those. You've got economic development, education, environment, equity and action, health, modern city hall, neighborhoods, open government, safety, and talent. Now, across those 10 committees, you've got more than 75 people who are advising you. Some of the some of the brightest in their areas here in Northeast Ohio. Big names on there. Dr. Amy Acton, the CEOs of each of our major hospitals on your health committee there. These committees, though, some overlap there. So uh, have you seen or do you expect to see collaboration between the people that are heading up these committees, like between, for example, health and education? Yeah. Yeah, we, we already are seeing that, you know, um, you talk about education. Uh, we can't uh, talk about how to improve uh, CMSD and public education at large without talking about trauma and mental health and getting input from our leaders in our healthcare system. We can't talk about uh, safety without talking about equity and racial justice, particularly as we focus on police reform and uh, do the hard work to make sure we can operationalize issue 24 and really bring the residents and law enforcement together to rebuild that trust uh, in our community. And uh, one cross-cutting theme I'm really excited about is having a modern and responsive city hall. Everything from our website to making sure when you call the mayor's action center, you get your call return, you can track that call 
uh, to using the, you know, the best in class technology that other mayors across the country have used to truly uh, improve the quality of basic city services across our city. And so everything that we do must be viewed through an interconnected lens because that's how the world operates. And we must bring Cleveland into that uh, perspective now. Mm. Specifically about modernizing City Hall, you know, doing a little bit of looking around at the at the systems that are in place right now. There's two websites. There's CLECityHall.com. There's also ClevelandOhio.gov. You focusing on both of those, one particularly? All of the above. Uh, we, we are going to make sure we do a, a top-down review of all of our websites to make sure we have a unified message and a cohesive narrative about how we're talking about the great city of Cleveland, Ohio. All right, Marilek. Now I'm talking to you right now as a Cleveland resident, Uh-oh, and I, ha- okay. I have to ask you about yeah. this. When we're talking about modernizing Cleveland, what's going on with our parking meters? <laughs> I, They're I, coin operated. I know, I know. I think we can get that done relatively soon. You know, um, I always get frustrated when I travel to, let's say, Chagrin Falls or Cleveland Heights, and I can use an app uh, or a credit card. But uh, you know, when I go a couple blocks down from my apartment and play out square. Uh, there are still people using nickels and dimes and quarters. Uh, it's past time we move Cleveland into the 21st century. Yes, yes. And as someone who lived downtown, I recently moved out of the downtown area. Okay. Sorry love to it, see love you it go. So much. <laughs> I know, I know. You know what? It was, it was good for me too when I was transitioning back here out of the city. Loved it. Loved the walkability, all that yep. good stuff. But also, man, you know, you can't even park at a meter on a weekend after 10 p.m. We got to get people down there. Know, What's going I on? Know, I know. All right. All right. Back to another one of your committees, the talent committee, a big part about bringing in talented people and keeping the ones here. That's a big part of growth for any kind of city. Now, you went to college in Washington, D.C. You studied in London before you come came back here to earn your JD and your MBA at Case Western. I have to wonder how much did your time away sort of shape and impact the way you think about what we need to do to bring that talent here and keep it here in Cleveland? It it shaped my perspective a whole lot. You know, when you think about those other markets, you talked about DC, London. Uh, I spent time uh, nearly two, over two years uh, living in New York City. Um, You know, we must create an environment where, uh, you know, people young and old want to come and live, work and play. I remember I was giving a TED talk in 2010, uh, nearly 11 years ago. Uh, And it was a quote from the former mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg. He says that talent attracts capital, not the other way around. Uh, And for far too long, we've been a let's build and they will come um, city. And that hasn't worked out for us. And so we must create the right conditions where people wanna come to Cleveland to invest, to raise a family, uh, to start and grow their business. Uh, And for me, Uh, I believe it's all about getting back to the basics, right? Great quality neighborhoods, great public parks, uh, leveraging finally our lakefront and riverfront as key assets for our city and our region. Uh, And the Cavs are are good, uh, once again, without LeBron James. And so (laughs) we got all the great assets uh, to uh, be, I think, a leading American city coming out of this pandemic. And I'm looking forward to making that a reality in our city. You know, being a Northeast Ohio native myself, I'm from Canton, so not necessarily the Cleveland area. You've spent some time in other places, but I do. I tell people all the time, I don't think people realize how rich the Cleveland area is. We've got that lakefront life. We've got that downtown living. We have all this green space. So, yeah, let's get those let's get those people here. Let's keep them here for sure. Absolutely. And, and talking about some of the things that I mentioned, some of the things that I did enjoy when I lived downtown, the walkability of it. Uh, one thing that your team has focused on is that every Cleveland resident should live within 15 minutes of those basic essentials, you know, your fresh groceries, public transit. That is, yeah, you are preaching to the choir on that one for sure. That is so, that is such a game changer when it comes to ease of living and access to things. I'm just wondering, how did, you, how did your team decide on 15 minutes? Well, uh, it really started um, in some of the reading I was doing uh, during the pandemic, uh, where a lot of scholars in urban planning talked about the future of the 15-minute city. Because what we discovered during COVID, as folks were locked at home, is we had to you know, really access and leverage our neighborhood amenities. Everything from our local restaurants to our local parks to having a grocery store you can walk to within 15 minutes. That should be the gold standard for every neighborhood in Cleveland. 
uh, to make sure that, you know, everyone has the same access to economic opportunity across our city. That uh, huge, huge undertaking, though, any any early idea, any early inclination of, you know, first steps or a game plan to try and make that happen? Well, uh, I think we're, we're starting it by some of the jobs we're posting for uh, during the transition. Uh, one thing I talked about was having an, uh, a chief uh, officer of integrated development inside my administration that will do a better job of working with building and housing, planning, um, economic and community development to make sure that our investments at the neighborhood level are very focused and cohesive to fit this 15 minute city uh, vision uh, for our community uh, and really making sure we're prioritizing equity in everything we do. And so how I'm building my leadership team will be a, a key building block to make sure we can make that a goal in our city. Well, you certainly have big plans for the city of Cleveland, yep. a lot to do. You've got at least four years to get some of these things done. What are your early priorities shaping up to be? Well, number one, uh, setting the right tone with members of uh, my cabinet uh, and frontline city employees. I intend to do a lot of listening uh, with folks that are collecting trash, plowing snow, uh, answering phone calls on our, the Mayor's Action Center hotline to really make sure I understand what's working and what's not working for our frontline City Hall employees. And then secondly, uh, making sure we have the right cohesive strategy uh, to ensure that every community is, is safe and secure. Um, you know, I wanna make sure we can pay our cops more, uh, looking at this next uh, budget coming up in 2022. We need to make sure that we have the right uh, voices around the table uh, that include our activists and law enforcement as we think about issue 24. And uh, thirdly, you know, we're getting uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars right now from President Biden uh, through the American Rescue Act plan, through the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And so making sure Cleveland uh, gets its fair share of resources to build the most inclusive comeback in our city's history must also be a key priority for me as the next mayor. Now, issue 24, you've mentioned now, and that's something I want to ask you about specifically, because that's going to be a huge change here in Cleveland yep. with the final decision on police policies and discipline actually being put in the hands of a civilian led board and commission. You know, there had been a recommendation role, perhaps in the past with the civilians, but now actually some decision making authority there. And when we talk about your early priorities, that's something that has to happen quickly because that passed. And, you know, there were definitely finite time frames in part of issue 24 on when that needed to actually be put into effect. So how is that coming along with the implementation of that? Uh, it's coming along well. Uh, we, uh, the city of Cleveland, um, filed their motion uh, to ensure that issue 24 can be added and reconciled as part of the consent decree. And I'm looking forward to working with Judge Oliver uh, and our current uh, police commission and law enforcement and community leaders to make sure we have the right strategy and the right framework to bring people together around this issue. And I know this issue uh, was very polarized with a lot of heated political rhetoric during the campaign, but now we have to govern and we have to come together as a city. And I believe Cleveland could be a national model of how to get police reform right if we come together, tone down the rhetoric and make sure everyone has skin in the game to rebuild trust between police and residents. This was one of the issues that was a differentiating, fa differentiating factor in the race between you and current Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly, who will be outgoing now. <clears throat> you know, you had a decisive win over him. His campaign manager actually had very nice words for you, said you put together a strong, organized team, great candidate, and that you were on the right side of issue 24. Now, uh, recently, Kevin Kelly also said, well, actually, it was right after the election. He said that he wants to put the election behind and hopes to be collaborative and work forward. So my question for you is, do you see yourself calling on any of the other candidates who were in the race for Cleveland mayor on any collaborative product I projects do. working forward? I do. Um, I, I was lucky to be endorsed by uh, former Councilman Zach Reed, and he is serving on my uh, public safety task force, part of the transition. I was also endorsed by uh, State Senator Sandra Williams, and she has a wealth of knowledge that I intend to uh, leverage as we think about how to govern uh, come next year. And as I said uh, on my election night and during my victory speech that every candidate uh, that ran for mayor this year deserves uh, a round of congratulations and applause because it was a hard fought campaign. We had tons of debates and forums, 
tons of community meetings and events. And I believe that it made our democracy better in Cleveland because of the competitive spirit and nature of that campaign. Well, it will not be long now from you being at that Mayor Frank Jackson inaugural mayor ball to now having your own ceremony coming up here very soon. Thanks for spending time with us, letting uh, our listeners here on the Three Things to Know podcast get to know our mayor-elect a little bit more. Before we let you go here, is there any anything you'd like to say to our listeners as you get ready to become the next mayor of Cleveland? Well, I just want to tell the voters of Cleveland, thank you for giving me your trust and confidence to serve you as your next mayor. And I'm looking forward to getting to work to make Cleveland a great American city once again. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Mayor-elect. We look forward to having uh, continued conversations over over the next of your time here serving here in Cleveland. Thanks, Stephanie. Tell Leon I say hello. I will. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right. There you have it. Those are the words of our soon-to-be new mayor, Justin Bibb for the city of Cleveland. Now, if you want to get to know a little bit more about his platform, you can go direct to the source. You can go to teambib.com. It's B-I-B-B, teambib.com. You can follow them on social media as well. When I say them, I mean the entire team that is supporting Justin Bibb. That Twitter account is bib for cle That Instagram account is bib for cle And the Facebook page is facebook.com slash bib for CLE. Now, speaking of our new mayor's social media platforms, that brings us to what you need to know in NEO because he recently tweeted that there will be a public swearing in ceremony for him. That's happening on Saturday, January 8th, 2022. Here is what Mayor Elect said. He said, It's my great honor to invite you to the ceremonial swearing in on Saturday, January 8th, 2022 at the Cleveland Public Auditorium. Those doors open at 1 p.m. The official ceremony starts at 2 p.m. It is free. It is open to everyone, but an RSVP is required. So if you would like to go to the swearing-in ceremony for Justin Bibb, the same, similar to the event that he went to for Mayor Frank Jackson back in 2005, he says that sort of sparked that fire under him to potentially run, eventually run, for Mayor of Cleveland. Hey, maybe that's you. Maybe there's a young person. Maybe there's an older person right now who's watching this and thinking, I would like to be the mayor of Cleveland someday. So maybe we can be revisiting this conversation 16 years down the road with someone else. Anyway, in any case, that swearing in ceremony is on Saturday, January 8th, 2022. To get those reservations, to get those tickets, you go to go.bib4cle.com slash ceremony. Again, that's go.bib4cle.com slash ceremony. And now that brings us to a good follow for this week. And we just heard the mayor-elect Justin Bibb talking about how he wants to modernize City Hall. He wants to bring it in to the current day, juice up that technology, make access better. So no better time than the present to start following the city of Cleveland on social media so we can keep up to date with all of that modernization and all of the projects that are happening and formulate new questions for the mayor as conversations continue with the people of the city of Cleveland and mayor-elect Justin Bibb over the next four years. So those social media accounts are Twitter, dot com slash city of cleveland at city of cleveland on twitter it's actually at city of cleveland on everything at city of cleveland on instagram and facebook.com slash city of cleveland those are the official accounts so we can follow along and see just what kind of change we do actually see come to pass under the leadership of justin bibb when he is sworn in as the city's second youngest mayor ever in january coming up very, 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 very soon. All right, that is it for this week's Three Things to Know podcast. Thank you all so much for being here. Now is the time, if you've been listening, where I will ask you to please, if you are enjoying the podcast, leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and share it with your friends so that we can connect with more people here in Northeast Ohio, keep these conversations going. And hey, listen, if there's a person of interest that you think we should talk to with a Northeast Ohio tie, shoot me a DM and let me know, underscore Stephanie Haney. I have my eye on a couple people that I think you'll be very interested to hear from, but I always love to hear from you. And also if there's a topic 
that you think that we should talk about. It doesn't necessarily have to be a particular person. It can be an idea that we can have a conversation about and we'll find the right uh, professional or the right expert in that space to get us all in the know because that's what we do here on the Three Things to Know podcast. Thank you all for your time and I will see you back next week. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.